guys, what's up? It's Sling, and today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to write your own webtoon. Hooray! I feel like I have a lot of experience to talk about this because um, being the producer and writer and creator of Spells From Hell, I have been writing an episode of a webtoon every single week for the past two years. Spells From Hell started uh, in 2020 and it launched in 2021. So far, we've had 60 episodes as of this recording, we've had 60 episodes go up on um, on the platform. And just yesterday, I finished writing the 66th episode. Without further ado, let's just jump straight in because I have a lot of tips for you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is just like planning your webtoon when you're starting out. I kind of wrote out like just a master document. Everything in my head, I just kind of took out of my head and I just poured into this master document. And in this document, I split it into sections and I can kind of read to you guys what the sections were. So the first most important thing I included was a log line. It became the, um, the synopsis that you see on the Webtoon website. It's good to start out with a log line just so that you know what the essential parts of your story is when you're going in. Like you need to have a very compelling log line so that you know other like people when you're introducing the story, either via Webtoon or when you're talking about it or pitching it to someone, you need to have a very clear and concise and compelling log line. So the first thing I thought of writing was the log line. Next, I asked some questions and these questions will vary depending on what kind of story you're writing. For me, I'm writing a fantasy story, so it has a lot of world building elements. And so the next part that I wrote, um, the question that I wrote is what is the world like? And in my case, um, the world was pretty complicated where it was set in modern day um, society, except there was magic such as cultivation, all those kinds of um, xianxia kind of um, powers that you'd often see in um, Chinese dramas, fantasy dramas. So I had a lot of places where I had to really think about, you know, what part of it is real life and what part of it is fantasy. So the next thing that I wrote in here is how does the magic work? And so if you have any type of magic system within your story, you really should figure out the mechanics of the magic within your world. Like magic always has to have a ca caveat of some sort. And so figuring out this caveat can help to define your magic system. This is a couple of questions that I've written down from online that helps me to kind of define what my magic system was. And I'm going to list that out for you. So the first question that I um, had to answer was, who is it? The next question is, what does it do? And then the third question, how do you make it happen? And the fourth one, how is the user affected? And the fifth question, how is the world affected? And the sixth um, question is, how are magic users grouped and perceived? And so this one's a big one that can kind of change the um, direction of your story. The most important part is how do people feel about this magic system. Is it secretive or is it something that's praised? So this can really define a lot of the things that's happening within your world. And so once you answer these questions, hopefully, you know, you'll have a better sense of how the world will work and how the characters will operate within that world. So the next bullet point that I put under that was power. So I wanted to figure out, you know, what the power dynamic was within the society. The questions that I put for that was who is most powerful in my world? and who is the most weak and then a question to add on to that who wants to be the most powerful and that's usually where your super villain or your villain comes in so yeah there's some questions that you should consider when you're um, trying to build your world back to my master document the next question that i wrote was what happened before the story and so this is what really establishes when your first episode is going to be within the story. There are so many different ways to tell the story, like, you know, just from a timeline perspective. When you do choose when to start writing your story within that time frame, you have to make sure you really understand everything that has happened before leading up to this story. Think about, okay, what did your character do yesterday? What about a month ago? You know, for the past year, these kinds of things um, need to be explored before you start writing so that you have a really strong grasp of the character. Um, my next point that I wrote in the master document were 
the characters themselves and I, I you know I kept it light try to have fun with it for me I just really wanted to get a good grasp of like what kind of trope they were you know are they broody are they the bubbly type are they the you know happy-go-lucky type as long as you have kind of an archetype to work off of I mean I'm sure like people who really enjoy creating OCs and characters a lot of it is you know pieces of yourself that you put into a character so um, really just have fun with this part and just explore as much as you want or as little as you want and see how it evolves while you're writing as well you know that can also be a way to go so after that my final part was just like a very brief or like you know how how however long you want to want it to be just a series outline um and honestly the series outline is going to change don't bank on it being 100 percent accurate the first time you write it down the story will definitely change as you keep on writing mostly just i had written a series outline so that i kind of had like an idea of the path that i wanted to take so a very you know light series outline to just kind of like get your juices flowing and kind of have like a general idea of where the story is gonna go once i had that master document i was ready to start writing so you could do all of this planning and write all of these things in this master document and become so hung up on the details and answer all of these questions but if you don't start writing the series isn't gonna happen so please don't put too much of your energy into planning Writing, guys, is the most important part because if you don't write it, it doesn't happen. So, this part is pretty important. It is how do you keep your motivation? How do you keep the energy and the motivation to keep on writing every single week? There are some things that have helped me. It definitely becomes part of your routine and part of your schedule once you really map things out. Uh, so the first biggest tip I have is that you need to have someone there to hold you accountable. So for me, whenever I finish writing, I send it off to um, some people, some of my coworkers. When I say have them hold you accountable, you will tell them that every single week, Friday nights or whatever time you want, I will give you an episode to read and have that friend be very excited to read it and be very excited to, you know, be updated on this story. And it could be your beta reader, it could be the artist, it could be a friend, it could be a family member, you know, it could be anybody, but just have somebody else waiting for your project to be released is just for me, the biggest motivator because I don't want to let people down. I especially don't want to make promises and not keep them. And the second point I have for motivation is to really know your speed. I know everybody writes differently. Like some people might write a little slower. Some people might write a little faster. Some people might work in spurts versus some people who like to write pretty like maybe a little bit each day. Know what your rhythm is, know what your schedule is. And once you have that settled, keep that rhythm on a weekly basis so this has to do with a little bit of experimentation but for me i can only write an episode a week like that's it like i don't i don't go any more than that because then i get burnt out and then, then i don't enjoy writing it anymore it takes me about two days to write it two full days to write it and i make sure that those two days are pretty much free for me to just chill out and just get in the zone and just write and just really just get immersed into that story. My third tip for motivation is context. Um, environment. Environment is so important. I don't do any creative work at my desk um, because that's where I do my work work. I do creative work either you know on the couch or on my bed, just in a place that is more chill, more relaxed. I put in my headphones and I play lo-fi slow so I plug that in um, it has no words so I can focus on what I'm writing and I just knock it out make sure you have a very safe and a very cozy and a very relaxing environment for you to write in and keeping that environment consistent can really help your brain associate that task with um, that environment so every single time you do lock yourself in to work you're like I got this. I'm all set. So my next tip is because 
you are coming out with multiple episodes and this isn't you know like a movie feature you're gonna be coming out with quick episodes every single week or every single whatever the schedule it is for you some episodes are gonna be worse than others well that's okay it's way better to have an episode versus no episode at all i don't think you should be having a very perfectionist mindset when you're going into writing these episodes because just like humans just like us every single week is different sometimes i'm too busy and i can't write out that perfect episode but the main thing is that you have an episode out there as long as you have an episode written i think you should be proud of yourself because i know as artists and as writers and as creators we all have a very very high standard for ourselves and most likely if you're not happy with the episode it's just you that's not happy with the episode whoever's reading it will enjoy it nonetheless because you wrote it and it's there and it's out and it is something that you've created and because it's something that you've created it's already pretty impressive i mean you created it out of nowhere so like, some things you just gotta let go and you gotta move on and move on to the next episode so my last and final tip is write what you want to see not what you think other people want to see ultimately if you're writing something that you enjoy if you're writing something that is indulgent and just everything you wanted to see in the world that you haven't seen yet then other people will like it for that if you had fun writing it then other people will have fun reading it so if you're having a blast writing your episode if you're putting in all of the humor that you want all of the action that you want all of the drama that you want the fantasy that you want whatever there's definitely going to be somebody out there that has the same taste as you and has the same thoughts and feelings as you that reads this thing and is just like wow this is exactly what i wanted now if you tried writing something that you think other people would like or that you think other people would write then you would always miss your own tone, your own style, your own thing that you wanted to put out into the world, right? And when people are looking for things to read and things to consume, they would be more compelled, of course, by the things that you are emulating and not your work yourself because you are trying to emulate someone else's work. So I think it's very, very, very important to always be true to what you're writing and always enjoy what you're writing because that passion is going to carry through the words, the art, and transcend into the reader. Please put your personal tastes and interests forward first and don't think about what the comments are gonna say. Don't think about, you know, people are gonna say this about this or say this about that. Write what you want to see in the world. And if people have problems with it, they could write their own webtoon. Nobody else is writing it but you. You're the one that's putting in the hours putting in all this time, putting in all this effort to create this piece of work. So truly, as long as you're enjoying it, that is the biggest and most important thing. So that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something about writing webtoons and I hope, you know, if you have that one webtoon that you wanted to create, this is your sign, do it now. Anything that you make, every, anything that you create is going to be a learning experience and it's going to last with you forever. So don't listen to any haters, don't listen to any, you know, buts or what ifs. Just do what you want to do and just try it out and see what happens. I hope this video was useful. Uh, definitely will be making more videos about producing a webtoon, writing webtoons, all those kinds of things. And so if you'd like to see more of those, um, please subscribe. Feel free to hit the like button. And um, yeah, if you wanna see more things about Webtoons, about my job, feel free to um, throw in some questions in the comments um, and I will look into them and see which ones that I can answer and talk about. Um, so yeah, I hope this video helped you and I hope you embark on your Webtoon journey. Good luck. Fighting! I'm rooting for you! You could do it! You got this! You got this!